Hi guys, welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome to the second match day vlog of the day. St. Patrick's Legs Sligo Rovers at Richmond Park in Shakur. Uh, first one is probably out by now, Dundalk and Drotted us, so keep an eye, check that one out um, if you don't mind. This one today, yeah, it's a massive, massive game. Um, very impressive Sligo so far this season. I've watched them three times live. Watched them once on TV and twice um, in person at the ground. Very impressed with them so far this season. Uh, second in the league coming into this one. Probably should have more points. They should have beaten Bowes. Should have got something against Shelburne. But all in all, really good start season for for them and uh, and John Russell. And I have to give John Russell serious credit because he has them playing very well. Um, they're well drilled. They're playing to a system. They look like a side who know what they're doing. As I said, well organised. And, um, and John, you know got the players, the type of players and characters he wanted in the window. And most most of them came in quite early. The ones that did come in late were players that were there before. So the lateness didn't matter with the likes of Ed McGinty and Mata, for example. Uh, Ellis Chapman's come in done well. Denton has come in done well. J.R. Wilson's come in done well. So they've got the recruitment right. And I have to give John Russell a lot of credit for that. And, um, you know, he's uh, the players know what they're doing. And... Um, and he certainly knows what he's doing so far this season. Definitely a contender for Europe already, I would say. I think their attack, Mata, Hartman and Power. Power suspended for this particular game. I think Will Fitzgerald might slot in there. But they've been working very well. The two wide players are playing high up the pitch. They're coming inside. They're linking up. Good combination play with the striker. And um, they've been very nice to watch. I've really enjoyed watching Sligo so far this season. Um, on the flip side for St. Pat's... Um, John Daly's kind of had the same situation where he's got in the players he's wanted to get in. Pat's beat a lot of player teams to the signature of some of these players. Um, and most of them have come in quite early. But on the flip side, Pat's don't look like they're well drilled. They don't look very well organised so far this season. Um, and for me, the players look lost. I mean, they're, they're eight in the league at the moment. Seven points from seven games. Five goals scored, I think. As far as I remember, it's really not good enough. They don't create enough chances. Um, they don't play high enough, high up the pitch enough. The lines are too far from each other. Um, the striker up front, Keating, is extremely isolated. I've seen a lot of teams play this season. Most teams play this season either live or on TV and both in many cases. And, uh, you know, the pass structure is very difficult to watch at the moment. It is extremely difficult to watch and... You know, they've got good players in around like Levy, Brandon Kavanagh, you know, Mulraney and that, but, you know, they're not close enough, working close enough with each other if they're playing in the number 10, if they're playing at wide. Um, there's no link up play with the striker. A ball, a long loft of balls often played up to Keating and there's no one within a couple of yards from him, basically. There's not much you can do there. And it's very difficult to watch and um, they haven't really changed it, which is, which is curious and disappointing as well. Coming into this game as well, St. Pat's have, um, looks like they've three right-backs injured. I think McLaughlin, Freeman and Cyber are going to be out for this one. So I'll be interested to see what they do there. If they put Lennon right back, you're taking him out of midfield. Bulger did play right back against Shamrock Rovers, the President's Cup. Maybe he'll come in. Um, Palmer's a player that's in and low and he commands us up the last day. Maybe he'll get a start. But um, Logic would say that Sligo get at least a point from this game. The way they're set up, etc. Um it's hard to see Pat's structure overall changing from what they've been trying to do uh, in their games. They look like they're very easily read and they were extremely lucky to get a point against Drotada uh, the other night if I'm on a switch of two. So it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. Um, it's a difficult one, but I think there's a lot of pressure on Pat's tonight. But you can only be honest in what you're seeing. I think the majority of fans of football clubs generally only see uh, their own team play and they can't really tell maybe the differences between their team and other teams. But, you know, as I said, I've seen an awful lot of teams play and um, it's not good enough from Pats. It really isn't. It's nowhere near good enough and there's no point, you know, hiding an opinion, let's say. Um, the game itself, though, I think Sligo might nick it. Pats may get a draw. If Pats are to win the game, I think it'd be 1 0, to be honest. They'll, they'll have to defend very well and, and dig deep and maybe nick a goal. Um, but it's hard to see them creating chances. It's also hard to see them changing their style of play and, you know, getting their attackers closer to the centre forward. And, uh, 
you know, the midfield seemed to be too far off um, the attacking area as well. And uh, obviously you have to defend. We all know that. But when they are getting forward pots a lot of the time, it's their attacking players who are carrying the ball far too deep. And by the time you get the ball up the pitch, there's there's not much um, support. You like to see you like the likes of leaving Brandon Kavanagh being closer to the striker, trying to work off the striker at times, going behind, and maybe impact the game further up the pitch. But um, that's not the way they're they're playing. So as I said, Sligo as well have been very good defensively too this season. To be honest, uh, apart from the first game against Bowles, they've settled in really really well. Uh, they've conceded four goals and two were in the first game. So um, they should be very confident coming this game after winning in Waterford as well. Key players. I think McGinty is one of them. I think he's had real settling effects in that Sligo team. Fantastic to get him back. Brilliant keeper. Has settled in seamlessly again. Um, you'd have to say Matt as well up top. But um, he's well supported by the likes of Hartman and Power in general. And Chapman who gets forward too. From Pats' point of view, I think Levy is actually a key player. But he needs to be further up the pitch. He works extremely hard. But um, you know he's picking the ball way too deep. Way too deep picking up the ball. And... Uh, you want him, he has the ability to take on players higher up the pitch and uh, make things happen higher up the pitch. Pats need that. Um, so he's a key player for me too. If they can get, if they can do that and get maybe Brian Kavanagh uh, higher up the pitch as well, um, I think um, Keating will be a better player for it too. Keating was excellent at Cork, but you know he's not getting, He's not been utilised properly, let's be honest. And until a player striker is utilised properly, it's very hard to be critical. So I'm going to say, let me know what you think of the comments, by the way, overall. But um, next time I see you, it'll be Richmond Park. I'm going to go with 1-0 Sligo. Do you know what? 2-1 Sligo. 2-1 Sligo. All right, lads, here we are. Just about to go into Richmond Park. Uh, half four, just after getting here from Oriel Park. So uh, a little bit rushed, but it's grand. Uh, Hopefully there's a few goals in this particular one. Nil nil in an Oriel. Let's go! 
So I'll finish the Patrick's Day 3, Sligo Rovers nil at Richmond Park. Excuse the lack of enthusiasm as such. I'm not well at all, boys. I tell you that. Um, not great this weekend. But there you go. We'll soldier on. I feel fucking shattered now, to be honest with you. Um, but what an outstanding performance by St. Patrick's leg. Absolutely outstanding. The top of the video. Everything I said at the top of the video. The polar opposite happened in the match. Um, from Pat's point of view before we get on to Sligo. Um... Pat's lines were very close together, they were compact, they were um, structured well together. Uh, Keating up front got a lot of support, held up the ball well most of the time, uh, often flicked it on and there were players running in off him. Um, got the ball into his feet at times, linked up play, but there were players there to link up play with. Um, the midfield duo of Lennon and Bulger were very... Uh, they worked well as a combination in there too, I think. Um, and it was complete, the polar opposite to, opposite tactically to what they've been doing uh, all season. And uh, as a result, they got a 3-0 win at the same time. Um, Turner got two goals. He played right back today. He was very good. He scored two goals. Uh, Connor Keeley done well for the first one, actually. He did well to keep it in and knock it back. And Turner finished well with his right foot. Uh, header from a corner, Jake Mulroney corner. Uh, made it two and the other chance the first half Joe Remen had a header before it was 1-0 to be honest I think it was 0-0 at that point of the game Um, let me think other chances Alex Nolan who was absolutely outstanding every time he got the ball he was looking to drive uh, he was exciting uh, McGinty made a brilliant save from him there were other bits and pieces of chances for Pats as well Um, second half then uh, Mace Amelia ended up scoring a very good goal came on as a sub and made it 3-0 um, and he had linked up well with Keating when it came on. Kavanagh did, did likewise when he came on for the injured Mulroney, linked up very well uh, with Keating. And you could see them trying to get in beyond and stuff like that as well. And uh, Keating had something to work off, which was just brilliant. They had a good platform in the middle of the park, too. Um, and all the lines were just very close to each other and um, within a structure and a system of uh, these players are good enough, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, these players are good enough. And they proved that tonight. Of course, they have to build on it. And they have to continue that way of playing. But they were outstanding tonight. Absolutely brilliant tonight. For the Sligo's part, they've been brilliant this season. But probably their worst performance of the season. That said, um, Pat still had to play well and took and took advantage of that. Because I still think um, Pat's over the previous weeks would have probably done well even to get a drive with that particular game. But Sligo couldn't get any combinations going uh, like they usually do. Pat's didn't allow them to do it, really. To be honest, Pats were well on top in the middle of the park too. And um, I suppose the, it, Sligo's test now is going to be powers out for two more games. Uh, McGinty and Pinacker had a bad collision. Pinacker was down for a long, long time, got stretched off. So he's, going. To, I imagine, going to be out for at least a couple of games, certainly. And McGinty ended up going off about 10 minutes later, I'd say, to do with the same collision. Um, so it'll be a test if those guys are out for, for Sligo going forward and seeing how they can deal with that because they're big players for them. Uh, that's going to be interesting. They'll be very disappointed with the performance tonight, to be honest. Um, but they did come up against the Pats team who put in by far their best performance of the season tonight too. Um, they were absolutely brilliant. And, uh, you know, even if they play like that going forward in terms of, uh, you know, getting support runners forward, getting players in behind combination plays uh play sorry um you know the lines closer together and even if they lose 
you know what I mean? I don't think fans would be too disappointed with that, like, you know what I mean? But they do have the players to do that, and, and they proved that tonight. And I think Bolger was brilliant. He was outstanding, and a lot of people give him a man the match. I give it to Alex Nolan personally, because when the game was, if you like, in the melting pot in that first half as such, Nolan was driving, 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 and beating players, and you didn't know he was going left or right. And um, Hutchison, who's been very good for Sligo, uh, didn't know if he was going left or right, put it that way. And an outstanding save from uh, from McGinty uh, to stop a brilliant Nolan run as well. So I'd give Alex Nolan man the match, but uh, going to leave it there, guys. I've rambled up long enough, uh, rambled long enough. I'm probably going to go to bed soon, to be honest. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments uh, if you're a Sly or a Pats fan, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.